Don't forget to follow us on social media for beautiful food and inspiration. So conceited, your prophecies defeated, with every date repeated, your failures are deep seated. When I see someone praying, I hear the words you're saying, we're damning their salvation. Trace up your derangement, looks like your god gone camping, yet constantly revamping. The Jesus Christ free market, let's get this rupture started. Some donate all their savings, and the worldly belongings. The rupture past them sadly, maybe they'll kill their families, bodies of children. Welcome to Local Love. We do the show live every Tuesday at 9 p.m. Pacific right here on Twitch. If you're listening on the podcast, 
check out twitch.tv slash echoplex media for all of our shenanigans um thanks for checking out down ballot thanks to the councilman for joining me for that and i can't believe i've been doing this show for this long and this is the first time i've had walter campbell on the show what's up walter <laughs> not too much david I, i'm really happy to be here thanks for having me man well, i'm glad you're here too i think um i've had like all of almost all of the other members of nvs on in another you know with other projects i think you moved away from san jose and i think that might yes. have been one of the primary reasons because we up and before the pandemic there was just fucking mayhem in my living room and that was this show so i'm real glad to have I, I, you here in a lot of ways you and uh <clears throat> patty k are the musical voice of this network and i just wanted to kind of thank you for that contribution wow here. well thank you very much for that i <laughs> flattered flattered to hear that uh honored to hear that um I, I i missed quite a bit of shenanigans over the past couple of years uh which is too bad um and like yeah i partly moving and just life changes you know how it goes <laughs> that, what is that there was that old song that was like it started off with like what if one of these days i finally got my shit together <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> well thanks for joining us i don't want to i don't want to go too heavy on uh the nvs stuff because i know you have some new projects that you sent us some music for but just real quick can you introduce yourself to people who might not know who you are absolutely so uh my name is walter campbell i am uh the singer of a band known as nvs that's nvs as opposed to E-N-V-I-O-U-S. Uh, <laughs> there are many NVSs in San Jose, uh, or at least there have been many NVSs, and I think maybe a couple in San Jose. I would like to think that we are the best NVS. Um, NVS is a punk alternative band uh, that started in 99. Uh, 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 a guy named Trey, uh, Trey Redder, and I, uh, I won't reveal his real name. You'll have to Google that. Uh, but we started the project with a drum machine, Dr. Rhythm, um, and uh, slowly but surely, we started recruiting uh, um, very talented friends to, to play with us, including River Black, uh, Kyle Lester, and, uh, of course, Mike Attorney. Um, and that is NVS. Fuck yeah, Mike is the drummer for like half the bands in San Jose. <laughs> <laughs> and beyond, I, I believe. I think he, he, he dials in remotely to assist other bands uh, <laughs> across the world. <laughs> You know, when he, you think you're super... using a drum machine somewhere in like Portland, it's actually just Micah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> well, cool. Cool. Like I said, you're kind of, um, we run uh, nice guys as one of the, as the intro for our uh, news and politics show on Sunday. Uh, this Jesus camping that we just played. Everybody really, really likes that. And, um, just other NVS songs we've been playing over the years, but I kind of wanted to, what is Dicky snake dick? So Dicky Snake Dick, uh, by the way, do you mind if I give a quick shout out to somebody who I realize never got enough credit for the song Nice Guys? It's, uh, really it's, uh, quickly. it's, it's your time. Absolutely. Um, Cole Yakko deserves a shout out. The idea of the nice guy. Nice guys, of course, are are uh, have been with us since the beginning of time. But the idea of, of capturing that sort of entity as the, <laughs> the caricature, as we describe, as the nice guy, kind of the composite of many uh, uh, things that, uh, we may not ver very much like about people. Um, uh, that was Cole's idea. Uh, I ended up running with it as a song called nice guys. And I feel like I never gave him credit for that. So Cole Yako, I apologize. Uh, you deserve credit for that. Nice guys. Yeah. And um, I looked at the, the checks in the mail. I looked at the date that that song came out and I noticed that it like predated, uh, the version of the nice guy that we kind of make fun of around here. It's sort of men's rights activist kind of manosphere guy. Right. But you were like right ahead of that. Like, I think you, you I, I don't want to blame anything on you, but you might have created that with your song. It, it, it may have been a contributing factor. And that for that, I also blame Cole. Oh, uh, cool. and you, everyone can blame Cole. As long as we can blame um, somebody who's not here, it's all good. <laughs> um, but uh, in terms of Dicky Snake Dick is a nice guy, actually. So Dicky Snake Dick is something else that I plagiarized from someone else's ideas. Uh, so there is an artist named Jamie Stewart who people may be far more familiar with uh, uh, in a band called Shushu, used to play in a band called Ibopa, um, a Bay Area based band uh, from, I believe, the uh, mid to late 90s, maybe even before that and, and beyond that. Um, so Jamie Stewart was in a sort of a tribute cover band called Richard Snake Dick and the Snake Dicks. And I ended up taking a, uh, an experimental music class with Jamie recently in August. And that kind of spearheaded this, this desire for me to just kind of, I've always liked experimental music, electronic music, stuff like that. I, I, I 
haven't taken enough time to really just kind of fool around and 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 play around with ideas. Um, and uh, this experimental music course uh, inspired me, and Jamie inspi inspired me. And so I'm kind of jumping around, but back in the day, so after Richard Snake Dick, you know, finished the, the Snake Dick, uh, that was Richard <laughs> Snake Dick. Uh, <laughs> um, there was talk about kind of bringing back that concept, uh, sort of like a you know, who's going to take the role of like the flamboyant guy who's willing to, you know, just prance around in his underwear or, or less and be a hot, sweaty mess and do covers of like ACDC and uh, I don't know, other rock and roll songs. And um, so I was I think it was more or less suggested for me to kind of take the reins and to assume the role of. Uh, Richard's brother or cousin or something like that. I can't remember exactly what. Um, and this is something that never happened, but taking this experimental music course with Jamie inspired me to uh, revive this Dicky Snake Dick moniker, uh, albeit in a very uh, different way. Um, and if Jamie's hearing, which he probably isn't, but if he happens to, uh, I hope he, <laughs> I don't think I ever actually mentioned that I was planning to use that name. Not, I don't even know if he came up with it. But anyway, um, I'm just plagiarizing people left and right and taking their ideas and then uh, squeezing out my own um, in the sort of concoction that I like to think is uh, uh, rock and roll, M U Z A K, uh, rock and roll music. And I think that, like, you know, calling it plagiarism is funny. I know that you're joking because we all, <laughs> like, anybody who does, like, I mean, I'm a DJ. I just straight up play other people's tracks and, like, rework them right. and, and, you know, chop them up or whatever. But, like, you can't, you can't possibly do music without accidentally taking somebody else's idea. It's just fucking impossible. Uh, absolutely. Uh, I, I agree a hundred percent. Um, I am very much a fan. Uh, I'm, I'm a little bit, uh, I, 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 I tend to be pretty liberal when it comes to like, Oh yeah, please, you know, feel free to sample this and, and use that. Like I, I, I am honored. I'm honored if people want to incorporate any ideas that I've, I've, uh, maybe, you know, helped create and then putting them in a song. I like to think of that musicians are in conversation with one another, just like, you know, uh, people who create all sorts of media and, and, and content are in conversation with one another. And um, that was partly not to kind of jump into something else, but partly with this new book on VHS album is somewhat a response to uh, to uh, a band called Throbbing Gristle, who, uh, who has been a huge inspiration for us. Um, and it's kind of, you know, indirectly carrying on a conversation with them, even though two of them are dead now. Um, but, you know, kind of keeping that spirit alive, but I'll be in a, a somewhat different way, um, in a different sound. Um, but paying tribute, more or less. Uh, my, my plagiarisms are tribute, I promise. <laughs> that's, that's, what I'll, uh, that's what I'll say, too, if I end up, uh, end up getting sued <laughs> like, by somebody big for copyright. I'm like, no, I was actually just paying tribute to Tucker Carlson. Thank you very much. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, I, d I did want to also thank you when we had some uh, people, this is a little back of house stuff that I didn't really talk about when we had some problems with some of the distributors about copyright. Um, I contacted Walter and Walter just immediately was like, well, no, actually, I want everyone to use our music, actually, if they want to play it like in the breaks of their streams. So instead of just giving me permission, Walter reached out, I think, to some of the distributors and was like, no, actually, I want people to be able to use this music. Please don't do this to people i don't know i don't know what your conversation was like but i i do appreciate that because uh you know <clears throat> you know you barely know me but you know we have a lot of the same friends and uh, it was just nice of you to take a few minutes or however long that took to do that for us and i appreciate that oh I, absolutely it was it was a couple emails i can't even remember what was said um but um yeah i mean i hate how <laughs> i mean obviously you know uh, you 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 want to give people credit where credit is due, but at the same time, like I think sometimes the pe the people who are more inclined to sue are the ones that are in a position where they shouldn't be anyway. <laughs> well, and they're we, they're actually doing pretty well. Uh, some of them anyway. We do kind of our stuff is uh, all licensed Creative Commons attribution. It's just like tell them who we are, and you can run all our clips you want. Like while the tracks are playing on here, you know the the player mm -hmm. is up on the screen, and people can see what the music is. People in chat hit exclamation point NVS or exclamation point Ruffies. Some of the more popular stuff that'll give a link to Bandcamp and stuff. So we do, we do attribute. We like, you know, we're not going to just like run a track and be like, "Here's a song." We won't tell you who it is. You no, know? totally. No, I think <laughs> it's, I think it's fantastic. I love the way that you, you know, promote the music. You promote the artists. Um, I love this. Just the search engine and the request. You know, that's amazing. Uh, uh, 
it's it's so awesome and it makes it so much easier to find stuff i i was just geeking out just like all right let's see if they're in there let's see if they're in there um, and if you have any friends whose bands really aren't in there you stuff. know you could bother them on my behalf you've already sent emails on my behalf before so why not why not just ask you to do it again <laughs> I, you know, I plan to. There are some albums that definitely should be on there. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Dougie a shout out with the new Alabastard. Um, I'm terrible with names, so I got to look up the name. Um, Eventually is a fantastic album. Um, and so, Dougie, if you're hearing this, you should definitely get it on. Doug's up in the chat, uh, actually. Echoplex. Doug's up in the oh, chat. Oh, shoot. Okay. He came in and tried to be your representative, but the people in my chat fired him. And now they're, they're holding a recall election <laughs> for a new uh, Walter uh, representative in the chat. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Uh, that's a hoot and a holler. Um, <laughs> because there's a lot of recalls yeah, going that... on and we're in California anyway, so <laughs> why not? So, hey, I'm going to play one of this. Uh, I'm going to play this uh, Fuck Your Guns and Truck by uh, Dicky Snake Dick, and we'll take a little bit of break, rock out to this song a little bit. Is there anything you want to say about this song before we uh, run it? Well, it was inspired by, it, it's also kind of like Nice Guys, where it's inspired by a conglomerate of uh, of folks that I don't really uh, appreciate or care for very much. Um <laughs> <laughs> let's let's just leave it at that it was also somewhat inspired by someone who decided to leave their truck in front of our home uh for about 10 months we're pretty easygoing folks we probably shouldn't have let it go that long but <laughs> there is there's a whole backstory behind that but we don't need to get into it it's just fuck that truck it's right. gone now this is fuck Copy your Eddie. guns and fuck your guns and truck by dicky snake dick and we'll be back in a minute with walter <laughs>
That was Fuck Your Guns and Truck by Dickie Snake Dick. It's uh, interesting, when we first got the um, book on VHS stuff, I was kind of expecting a, a punk rock thing, and then we got it, and I was like, this is not punk rock, this is different. Were you always doing like <laughs> electronic music on your own while you were working on uh, other projects with uh, NVS or others? No, um, I did work on an electronic project called the Holden Complex or Holden's Complex when NVS, I think we were on like a really brief hiatus, like around 2002 or so. That was very brief. Um, and then I did start doing some home recordings, uh, very much electroacoustic in the sense that yeah, in 2015, so Book on VHS started with me taking acoustic instruments recording really crappily, you know, lo-fi, you know, through my, my Mac book, you know, uh, speakers, just intentionally trying to, to make the, the, the audio quality pretty poor. And then I would, you know, add effects and, um, you know, you know, distortion and, and, you know, filters and things like that to the, um, to the acoustic instruments. Um, I've always loved electronic music, pop like electronic, like anyone who's spoken to me, you know, I, I've talked about, you know, before shows, I will, you know, listen to the day of, I'll listen to the Immaculate Collection by Madonna. Um, I mean, that's more pop, pop, really poppy pop. Uh, yeah, but she got but her, she got I, her start I, in the clubs with electronic music. That's true. Yeah. She and uh, Victor Calderon were huge pioneers in the eighties of electronic music. Oh Yeah. No, I, I mean, oh my goodness, the 80s, uh, not to get all nostalgic about the 80s, but in definitely one of my favorite eras in terms of just just fantastic music that was being created. The 70s as well. I mean, over the last decade, I've gotten a chance to really get into um, some artists that I can't believe it took me that long to really get into. Then I probably wouldn't have appreciated them in my 20s and my my teenage years as much. Like Cabaret Voltaire, um, you know, Nurse with Wounds, uh, you know, craft work. I didn't really start appreciating craft work, really appreciating craft work until my 30s. Um, but so there's always been this passion for electronic music. I've always been drawn to keyboards to since I've never really done much more than just kind of dabbled. My dad used to play, you know, piano and, and jazz piano in clubs, uh, you know, get him through college. And so we had a grand piano at home that I just really just inexcusably spent very little time with. Um, it's really a huge lament of mine now. Um, but I've always been drawn to that. I've always wanted more keyboards, more like piano in NVS at, at various points. Uh, and, you know, I, I think there's been some, some songs where we've had that opportunity, but, um, this project was definitely a chance for me to, to, uh, tap into, um, I don't want to say I don't listen to punk rock, but I, I really don't, I don't listen to that much punk rock. Um, there are some exceptions. I mean, I was definitely a big Doors fan for a while. Uh, the Dickies are still a band that I listen to a lot. Um, you know, No Means No, just kind of, there, there are various bands that I absolutely love. And then in terms of like local bands, I mean, the Ruffies, God, you couldn't ask for a better band than that. They're, they're phenomenal. Uh, Patty um, Kay's, Patty Kay's like, uh, cycling distance from me too. It's, I'm like fucking, <laughs> it's, I'm, um, foolish for not spending more time with that guy. Not only is that guy like an amazing singer, a good songwriter, but he's also just like a really good friend and a nice guy and fun to be around. And it's never, never he, a dull is, time with Patty Kay. Oh my goodness. No, no, he is like, I mean, I was watching some of the, what was the episode that he was on a couple, um, a couple weeks ago. I mean, he is, he's an entertainer. He is, he is fascinating to watch. He is very entertaining. He, and he's a, he's a very good guy. At the times that I've gotten to sit down and talk with him. Um, and he's a fantastic songwriter. I mean, this, <laughs> If I may go on a little side tangent, the, when I just kind of took a little time, uh, you know, when, um, you know, NVS uh, temporarily, you know, stopped for a bit in 2016, I had some other kind of life things going on. Um, I really lost touch with a lot of great music that was going on in the area. Um, I, I didn't like releases that just ended up being totally off my radar. The last uh, Relapse album, um, so uh, We Are the Children. Oh, my God. It's so good. My great. My God, like, yeah, I, so I think that album came out like literally either days before or after my mom passed away in 2015. And it was just kind of a crazy time for various other reasons. And that album, for whatever reason, was just off my radar. Um, I didn't really start listening to it uh, till more recently. Um, I recognize a lot of the songs, you know, seeing them live, but my God, um, same with um, Rebels Camp. I'm embarrassed to say I haven't listened to to enough Rebels Cab, you know, seeing them live, sure, but I haven't actually listened to their recordings and talk about a guy who loves synth. You know, you'd think that would be just right up my alley. 
Um, so I was just actually rocking out their their most recent um, uh, album, which I'm blanking on the name right now, but it's on it's on SoundCloud. You should listen to it. Um, it's phenomenal. I can't believe it took me that long. It's that, been out the for most four recent years, album would listening. be Zaliens. Zaliens, yes. Oh, it's so good. Such that a- needs to be on Bandcamp. Uh, I, I could not find it on there, but guys, I want to give you my money. Tell me how I can pay you to to, to for that album because it's phenomenal and you should be paid for it. The thing, um, the thing about fact, those cats is if, if you mention that you want their album, they'll just be like, what's your address? And they'll mail it to you. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> they're, uh, they're not exactly in it for the money. So that's that, but that you can, you also hear that in their tunes, right? If like yes. they're obviously not trying to make hits. So, um, on that, oh man, on Zalians, man, the first time I heard that fucking Frankenstein song, I almost lost my mind. That song is I, so I, good. I, just heard it for the first time today. It is it is phenomenal. Um, I, I think my favorite right now might be, um, uh, what is it called? Headhunter. Super good. good. I was listening to that one multiple times. And then they have another one on their SoundCloud. I don't think it's on that album, but it's called The Stretchable Logic of Mr. Leo Tarde uh, by G. Willikers. Oh, yeah, yeah. G. Side Project. Yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah, that was really entertaining. I enjoyed that one. Yeah, the, the, that's, um, it's amazing. There was... um. <clears throat> I don't know, like, because I had just kind of gotten into the local music scene right around then, because I moved here like around 2010, and then uh, like hooked up with a uh, Randall Aubrey, and then he started introducing me to some people, and then um, I met Juan, and then we started doing the show, and then I got real plugged in, and it was just like, it was like, wow, you know, I've been, you know, when I first got here, I was like, oh, where's the DJ scene? Where's the DJ scene? Where's the parties? Mm-hmm. And that whole fucking time, I wasn't going all, all your all your show all your shows, and I should have just been at your shows because it was something fucking. It would have been something to do, and um, you know, it's just the San Jose, the the there's a there's a tight knit like uh band scene basically, and I just didn't even know about it, and I feel like I missed out on a lot of stuff. But in the last six years or whatever, I missed out on nothing. Everybody everybody sends me all their stuff now, so I get to, <laughs> I get to hear it. Um, have you heard Periscope's yeah. latest album? Oh my god! No, oh no, I have not. God. I'm I need to hear more of Perry's uh, recent stuff. I I don't think I've heard anything from Periscope in the last couple of years. So I need to change that. I missed the uh, he did a live performance or they did a live performance that was streamed that I had Over intended to see and I missed it. Yeah, Art Boutique. Uh, which I mean, that must have been phenomenal because I got great sound over there, and we were very happy when we played over there. And any recordings I've heard from over there, it's, it's really top notch. Yeah, I, um, I, I can't say enough about their album. And uh, another uh, one of the songs off that album, Boomers, the chat is just like, <laughs> I'll play a song and be like, this song, blah blah blah, is pretty good. They're like, yeah, it's no Boomers, but it's all right. So, <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm gonna I'm gonna look that one up too. I'm gonna I'm gonna try to find that one. It'll be on my playlist for tomorrow. Um, so thanks for, thanks for highlighting that one. Yeah. And that whole album is just amazing. Like, uh, the first song I really liked by him is something you probably heard. It was off either their first or their second album. It's called meet cute, really good song. Um, but, and then, then boomers just blew me away. And like just his vocal performance on this recent album is just like, you can tell he's been doing the work, you know, it's just much. Oh, Perry like, is, he's always yeah. been a good singer, but this was like more powerful, more like, okay. This sound, it, you could tell when somebody has been doing the work, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, definitely. And when they're not, <laughs> and I've been guilty as charged sometimes, but you know, <laughs> that's all right. And it has been around since 1999. You're going to phone it in. We sometimes. don't need to do the work. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, it's too bad. Cause we, there was a point where we were on a roll. God, we were so tight, uh, like a tight pair of jeans, really, really on it. And then now we're out of practice again, but you know, that, that elusive, uh, return show will, will happen. Um, and we really look forward to it. Um, the, the other guys have been getting together more often than I have, because I've always been the one that's been, it's been harder for me to get out. I don't drive. Uh, so I take public transit everywhere. Um, and I happen to live a bit further away, but, uh, the rest of the guys, they've been keeping up their chops, which is really good. So I can eventually meander down there and, and, and dust off these, uh, windpipes, which have not been singing NVS style for a while. I think that's what I like about book on VHS is that I don't have to, 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 to bellow it out the same way, uh, as NVS, which definitely takes a little bit more practice and, um, uh, more soundproof to room. Oh, and it's just, it's just, I mean, it's just rough on your body too. Like, Oh, NVS is rough on my body. Yeah. But, but, <laughs> but I mean, just even, just even singing that way is just rough on, you know, your, your throat. Basically it's not, it's not, 
Yeah. It's not, it's not maybe comfortable the next day. I'm sure your voice isn't doing so great after, after an especially good, especially like, um, exuberant show. I always kind of worried if we were ever to go on tour and if we were to do like a two week stretch or more, whatever, um, what the quality of my voice would be like, uh, because I was notorious for that. I would get sick before shows. I'd be drinking all my throat coat tea and, and, you know, being all worried that I was going to sound like shit. And I forgot that it was punk rock and it was going to be fine. But, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's, um, I probably never learned how to sing correctly. And uh, maybe you one sound, day I will. You sound fine to me. <laughs> sound fine to me every time. But you were drinking that throat coat tea, and I, I was just drinking whatever was cheap and on tap. So I mean, <laughs> so you had mentioned book on VHS. Um, we've had music from book on VHS for a couple years around here, um, but I've never really heard you say what it is and what it's about. What's up with book on VHS? So oh, that's a good question. I should have thought that one out before. <laughs> before um, producer Dave uh, asking the tough questions. <laughs> <laughs> so what's up with your, um, so book on, what's up with your music, man? <laughs> gotcha. But, but, book on VHS. So at least originally, we're not doing it as much anymore, but there was definitely like a, a computer PC game theme. So I used to play PC games and I wanted to incorporate that into like the imagery. So I was taking screenshots from like, uh, like old Sierra games and Lucas, uh, Lucas arts. And, um, you know, there are samples from things like, um, Oh my God, what's the name of that game? <sighs> I can't remember, but, but it, it's at the end of, uh, in a state worse than death. There's a long sample from, um, it's the same company that did Willie Beamish and I'm just blanking on the shadow of the dragon. I think it is. Uh, anyway, uh, you know, what's funny is that we're here on show. Twitch and I don't know, I don't know okay. goddamn shit about video games. <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't anymore. I, I definitely, there was definitely a time and I, I have, uh, I am totally out of the loop with video games now and, P, and computer games. And I get o overwhelmed by what they can do. Um, I probably will have a seizure if I watch them too closely. Um, maybe not. No, sorry. Not, anyway. Um, but yeah, so there was definitely like a video game sort of nostalgic feel. There was definitely like in the sort of an 80s feel, which sounds like a real cliche to say that. But, you know, book on VHS, it was also alluding to it was originally called book on tape, uh, which I think was a project that Trey and I even were talking about starting at some point, if I remember correctly. I don't know. I feel like he helped come up with that name. Um, but it became book on VHS to make it a little bit different. Uh, also, the idea of like a book on VHS. I don't know. I was kind of playing with words, playing with ideas. Um, but it's, what is it about? What is book on VHS about? It changed when Carl joined. Uh, so we were recording, uh, what was the pleasure EP or I was recording the pleasure EP and then Carl from a band called the greening, uh, they're based in San Francisco. You should absolutely listen to them and I, have, I need to talk have, to him about getting, like, uh, I have like three songs by the greening. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. Okay. Yeah. The greening are, are amazing. Great live show. Um, highly recommended. They don't play live very much anymore, but, um, if you ever get a chance to see them, they're, they're really great. And Carl is the, uh, um, the keyboardist and vocalist, or one of the vocalists for the band. Um, but he is my partner in crime and book on VHS now. And when Carl joined, it really gave the band, I feel like some, <laughs> for lack of a better, uh, way to put it, some legitimacy in terms of like, just in terms of, uh, you know, some technical chops, you know, Carl can definitely, you know, he's been playing, you know, piano since he was, I don't know five, seven, something like that. He's been playing a really long time. Um, and he could do things that I could only like dream of doing um, as a musician. Um, and he has these, these great ideas. So basically, um, you know, I had this EP recorded and he jumped in, he, he recorded his parts. And the next one we did was a little bit more collaborative. And then all of these EPs ended up becoming the use your collusion uh, album. Um, you know, when we just ended up putting it together and releasing it as an album, because it made more sense that way. Um, but I think the band became a little bit more, it lost the sort of the, like video game, nostalgia, like eighties feel a little bit, it became a little bit more political. Um, uh, you know, there's definitely some more social commentary in there. Uh, there's, th there's definitely a lot of like personal stuff, like deeply personal stuff that I, you know, don't even need to elaborate on, but, um, much like NVS, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to make sense. It's some of it's nonsensical. Some of it is... I don't want to say an exaggeration, but it's like playing with an idea and just really running with it. Like people do with music. And, um, um, I definitely do that with book on VHS. Um, 
and it went from this sort of desire to make something really low fi like intentionally low fi to with this new album really just wanting to create something that sounds a bit better you know R rather than recording you know synth parts <laughs> me hovering over Carl Synth and me holding my laptop while he records. And then I end up affecting things and, you know, and whatnot, you know, we're actually directly recording into the, into my laptop. You know, I have a little synth that's, that's I can't even tell you what it is. That's how, uh, you know, un, uh, knowledgeable I am with the tools that I use. Uh, um, but you know, just plugged right in, being able to play directly in just a little mini synth that I would say almost all of the music on the new album was played on, uh, aside from, you know, sound effects and vocals. Um, we have shifted from instruments to, sorry, we have shifted from guitar and bass because uh, there's no guitar and bass on this new album at all. Um, there was barely any toward the end of uh, the last EP we put out. Um, I don't know. It, it's, it's really, <laughs> I'm going to give you an, a bit of a non-answer. Book on VHS is anything you want it to be. <laughs> No, that's that's fine. That's fine. I uh, <clears throat> like I said, I was surprised when I first heard it, based on what I'd heard from you before. Pleasantly surprised. Hopefully, ple okay, excellent. A pleasant, pleasant surprise. Because I, I, I gotta admit, I don't know how people. I love hearing feedback about it, whether it's good or bad. Um, because honestly, I, I just don't really have a sense. I don't know how much people like that. You know, whatever I would call it, I call it pandemic pop. Um, <laughs> you know, electronic. Uh, you know, some of it's a little experimental and definitely not as experimental as Dicky Snake Dick. Um, but, um, yeah, I love, I love to thank you for sharing that because I love to hear impressions. I love to, to kind of get people's take on it. Cause it is different than NVS. I will say um, I like the new, it, the newer stuff better than the older stuff. It does. Like you were saying, <clears throat> like I spin disco house music. So like my, <clears throat> for electronic music, my preference is always like more production, more production, more quality, but that doesn't mean I don't like lo-fi stuff, but like for my personal taste, the newer stuff, yeah. I like it. I oh, like cool. it more, but others may disagree. <laughs> so. Yeah, no, I mean, you, you, you never know. I, I, I gotta ask you. So you're mentioning, you know, being a DJ and, uh, did you, did you listen to or do you listen to much coil? I am not sure what that is. It's so I, I just, I'm only throwing it out there just as, as a, a, a personal recommendation coil, uh, fantastic. So throbbing gristle, just kind of tying back to that. One of the members of throbbing gristle who has since passed away, Peter Christofferson, uh, ended up starting a band called coil with, a, a, a someone named John balance. Um, and if you're familiar with psychic TV, also a kind of a throbbing gristle connection, but there was some association with psychic TV. I only mention this because I think it might be up your alley coil. Uh, there's an album called love secret domain, which is phenomenal. That is like considered just like sort of like a techno electronic album masterpiece it was from 91. I want to say, um, and strongly recommended to, to you or anyone who, who likes that kind of music. Um, right. I know they used to play tracks from that in the clubs all the time. There's a there's a ton of stuff that I'll like listen to that I won't necessarily spin. So if it's from 1991, I'm probably not going to spin it. It's probably not like <laughs> it's probably not like it's probably not like 15 pounds of shit in a five pound bag, right? So that's <laughs> not not exactly, yeah. Yeah. So you know, but uh, I definitely definitely check it out. Anything people recommend to me, I try to take a minute to check out. But yeah, like I'm always digging for music, and it's always current. I do play some stuff from like the late 90s, but I'll have to like, hmm. play it early in the set because if I <clears throat> I play anything like like kind of thicker that happened after the big loudness war and then i mm. play something that hap that's like less thick with like less elements that happened before the loudness war it just doesn't you know it's like all the all the all the all the big goes away and that's like right not a good thing if you have 45 minutes in a dance floor so no yeah <laughs> <laughs> did did you ever see some of the hybrid shows that would be like a live band and then you have a dj playing like in the next room uh which i feel like would happen very often <laughs> with local shows sometimes uh, i didn't go to any of those but i've played shows with the rebels camp i've played shows with audible smoke signal like uh, like we'll play like i won't play like the sort of like 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 kind of peak hour disco stuff i'll play stuff that's like more percussive more funky Gotcha, but yeah, gotcha. I've, I've played. Yeah, I, I like that. I've had more fun bookings doing that than trying to get into the whatever tiny, non-existent electronic sort of dance scene is down here. <laughs> the only, the only like big events that happen for dance music down here, honestly, are fucking bike party. Like that's it. Hmm. Only bike party. Like there's, I have videos on my Instagram of just like a sea of people, and then I go play an event at a club. I'm like, where the fuck are all those people? 
that were rocking out and cheering while I was playing bike party. I'm like, oh, they're riding their bike somewhere. So bike party is San Jose. It's a San Jose thing, right? But, or is it more Bay Area? Like a lot of places have a bike know. party. I've played at uh, East okay. Bay bike party. Also, I've played at San Francisco bike party. Uh, but San Jose okay. is like, it's either because I know which one to play because I know all those guys pretty well. And so like I choose mm -hmm. to play, I choose to play uh July and then I'll play like one in the winter just for fun. But July is like July is the one that's like ego fuel, right? Like it's, there's like, it's just that fucking as far as the eye can see at the monopoly board in front of discovery meadow, usually just people like dancing, but yeah, it's um, a lot of places have a bike party and I would, uh, you know, if I had, if I was independently wealthy, I'd just go on a bike party tour, honestly, <laughs> like start emailing every bike party and be like, Hey, I want to DJ at your bike party. And coming from San Jose. They're like, we're in Minneapolis. What are you talking about? <laughs> <laughs> I don't, hey, I I'm going really like to rock a book on VHS. I'm going to rock a book on VHS song here called "Convincing People," and I'm going to refill oh, my drink, and uh, we'll be right back with more with uh, Walter Campbell. Thank you. 
shit about my people in the They say I ain't the most loyal people. Did you ever see this? Where I can stand and play like this. And shoot the money. And I want to use the money. So hey. I ain't the most loyal people. I ain't the most loyal people. Loyal people. Shoot somebody. Loyal people. Shoot somebody. I ain't the most loyal people. I ain't the most loyal people. Those convincing people. That was by a book on VHS. Convincing people of anything is very difficult. It, it, it can be. Um, but with the proper rhetoric, the proper persuasive methods, then, you know, the proper following. <laughs> Limitless. Or if, or if you find people where they are and tell them exactly what they already want to hear, but you're not convincing anybody of anything yeah. at that point. No, yeah, and then you're just telling them what they want to hear. <laughs> yeah, so uh, that's, the, yeah, I like, I like that. Um, more than the other stuff and just the reason is that fat analog bass that like if you played that through a keyboard and then tried to mic it on your laptop i just it just wouldn't like it wouldn't the the everything over like 100 hertz would go away and so like there wouldn't be any fucking nothing there would be no shake in that ass right I'd, i'd like to think yeah no that's a great great way to put it um i'd like to think there was a rhyme and reason for the way that i did things from 2015 until 2000 19 with book on vhs but stuff. apparently just yeah no, that's, that's true it, it and that's the definition of exper- experimentation and experimental experimental music and i i love that i love that so much i love just like i love the fact that with book on vhs uh this is one thing that's quite a bit different than my approach with nvs or the you know working with a, a, a you know a, a, cl- a collection of guys um with nvs you know certain things tend to be a little bit more structured it makes sense, you know, bringing ideas together. Um, with Book on VHS, it was a chance to, you know, a lot of times it might just be the first or second take that I'm recording something, and then it it's just ends up becoming a part of the song. Part of that is me just not wanting to be a perfectionist about certain things and just, like, really going for the feeling. Uh, really going for the feeling. But no, if, and seriously, the just kind of really going for the feeling um, and... You know, sometimes you just, it, it feels right. And you're like, oh, maybe I could have made it sound a little bit better. But like, I feel like I captured it. I feel like I captured the heart. I feel like I captured what I wanted to do. Um, I don't even know what I wanted to do, but I started, you know, playing this little synthy part. And then I feel like I'm going to use that and cut this up and this and that. And it's fun. I love just sitting in front of, you know, I use GarageBand. It's not nothing fancy. I don't use Logic, uh, you know. Maybe one day I'll I'll upgrade, but honestly, there's so much you can do with GarageBand. I'm still like there's there's tons of stuff I still don't know how to do on there. Um, eventually, I'll upgrade, but I think it's a great just tool, um, and it's just fun to just create. It's fun to just put sounds together and see what comes up and and see what happens. And to the, to the extent that there's limitations on GarageBand, too, sometimes working with Uh, limitations no matter what you're trying to do is going to force you to be creative in ways that you might not otherwise be creative absolutely and what you're saying about structure what you're saying about structure and working by yourself like is fucking 100 percent true because as a person who works with other people i have co-hosts usually for this show i was like i'll get the fuck out of here i'm gonna interview walter i I barely know walter (laughs) y'all are taking the night off but like you know we do a we do a news show on sunday and if i have one co-host i kind of don't have to worry too much about the structure then i get two more co-hosts mm-hmm. and i'm spending all my time as the person like in the studio that's putting the feet out like worrying about the structure worrying about the flow worrying about the pace worrying about kind of keeping everything going in a certain direction and i i understand like if you are the i don't know the, the fucking the de facto leader of a band or whatever you are in fact thinking about those things in addition to what you're doing hopefully your bandmates are thinking about that too right that, that this needs to be going this direction because we're doing a song on a stage and there's people here to enjoy the fucking song but it, right. it to to an extent it it occupies uh, part of your mind that that might be freed up if you were doing something by yourself very true very true and that's certainly been the case with nvs for me um those guys keep me in line sometimes i i i uh yeah, uh, definitely a case where I I I feel very fortunate. I'm kind of like Ringo Starr, you know. I'm happy to be there, just happy to be there. But um, at the same time, we're we're all good friends, and um, we enjoy playing music together, and it just happened to work out great that way. Um, but they pick me up in, in many ways. Um, I don't want to I don't want to sell it the other way. By the way, I love my co-hosts, and sometimes uh, they have a take I would never have, or 
like in your case, mm-hmm. like uh, Kyle's a pretty good bassist and I'm pretty sure you're not a bassist. So, <laughs> you know, it's like they, yeah. it's just, it's, it's not that that's a problem or anything. In fact, you probably end up with like a better creative product once things are, are flowing and everybody's on the same page. It's just that if you kind of want to pick up and kind of go with the flow without a plan. You should probably be doing that on your own because otherwise it's going to be, it's going to be a shit show if you include a couple other people, <laughs> right? Or yeah, maybe involving like one other person. I mean, you know, I guess a di- different methods work for different people, but what's been really great. I mean, I limit a bit the fact that, you know, with book on VHS. So Carl and I used to be roommates uh, or housemates and he literally lived in the room connected to mine. I mean, you have to walk through my room to like use our bathroom when we had a, a, a shared housing situation. So <laughs> we lived in very intimate quarters and that allowed us to really collaborate in a way that, you know, that you know, we don't get to anymore because we live in separate places. We live with our respective partners in separate cities. And so what it is, is me doing my thing and then I'll share it with him and, you know, he'll experiment and come up with ideas. And then when we decide, okay, we're ready to record. And that's, that's kind of how we did it where I, you know, recorded a, pretty much all my parts and then shared them with him. And then he, he put in his parts and there's, yeah, drawbacks and, and, and certainly, uh, positives, uh, to that approach. Definitely. Definitely. Well, I'm going to get a, I'm going to get another one of these book on VHS songs in here. This one's called slow slice. I like the name. So what I did on it was on purpose. I never listened to it because I figured wait till you were on the show. Listen to it. Very first cool. Time. I do. It's one of my favorites. And I, I like to like, if we get new music, especially if it's from somebody we know, I like to like not listen to it till the show. Cause it's like, you get a fresh uh-huh. take on it. And if it's, you know, like if it's something amazing, then you get a, you get a genuine reaction from me instead of a forced one. So yeah, I haven't heard. So slow what, do slice. You, what do you do if you don't like it? You know what? I've been, <laughs> we've been pretty fortunate in that. I don't think we've gotten any shit. I don't oh, think good. we've gotten okay. any, All right. we've gotten music that I don't like because the genre or whatever, but that's different than sure. stuff being bad. Right. Very true. Very Absolutely. different than stuff being bad. Yes. So, and honestly, like that was, we don't have a lot of rules around here, but man, if some, if one of my fucking co-hosts starts talking shit on any song I play, they're gone. I will never fucking have them on the show again. If somebody, even if the song's unpolished, maybe the singing's a little bad or any of those things. If somebody took the time to send me their fucking song, the least you can do is shut the fuck up. Right. Yeah. Shut up and listen. <laughs> yeah, that's the least you can do. And, or you can maybe open your mind a little bit and try to find something you like about it. Cause like I'm yeah. playing a bunch of, it's almost all rock music and punk music and like, it's right. not where I'm from. So if I can come in and appreciate sure. the stuff and like, enjoy the music, then somebody else can fucking do it too. Because I like breaks and disco yeah. and like, we don't get a lot of breaks and disco. So, I mean, if I can, if so I can be positive and, 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 and show love to the people who send, spend a little bit of time to send me the music and so can everybody else. That was like, the, we don't have a lot of rules around. Oh, don't break Twitch terms of service and don't talk shit about the music. Those are, those are our two rules, I guess. I mean, we're already tearing our, our, each other down, you know, left and right for other reasons. We don't have to about the music that we, <laughs> that's played on this show. Uh, not you and I, obviously, but, but, you know, just in this world that we're living in is very oh, we, contentious we find, these days. There could be, there could be a fucking bad set of circumstances that comes along where you and me end up trying to tear each other down. Probably. Oh goodness! Don't, I don't, hope don't think that don't think that anybody's immune to that. That's the fucking part of being human. Yeah, yeah. But I'm such a people pleaser. I, 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 you know, I'll probably do everything in my power to make you like me. Um, you know what's really funny is as I started uh, streaming, <laughs> um, like politics and doing like polemics and stuff, I've actually become more conflict averse in the rest of my life mm. because there's like so much conflict going on in like the part of like a part of my life now that you know makes up a part of my income that like, that's the last thing I fucking want when I'm not doing this is to like in, have conflict because I deal with it all the time. And like, it's, it's tiring. It's not tiring to cover it. It's sometimes it's fun because people like lose their fucking minds over really stupid stuff, but it, it's tiring. Yeah. Like in my regular life and my personal life, I don't argue with my yeah. family. I don't get in fucking, I don't get in arguments with other fucking people like content creators. Like I did maybe at the yeah. beginning, I'm just like so over that shit. And so I think that, yeah, I think that, <clears throat> I think that I've definitely learned a little bit by doing this. And one of the things is like, yeah, conflict can be fun to cover, but man, don't have it with your friends. Don't have it with other people in your community. Don't have it with, with people in bands. Don't have it with the bartender. Well, actually fuck that. If you have a conflict with a bartender, bartender's just going to kick you out. It's the only customer right. service yeah. job where you can do that. I think the fuck person at McDonald's should be able to do that too. 
<laughs> anyway, this is Slow Slice by Book on VHS, and I'll be right back with uh, Walter Campbell. Baseline. So uh, that's Carl there. The baseline was sex. That like um that Thanks. song's around like like eighty or ninety beats a minute. It just reminds me so much of drum and bass. Like if the drums were going like faster, that bass line is just like oh. No, for sure, for sure, absolutely. <laughs> well, it sounds like you liked it. I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to hear that. It's a, it's a personal favorite on, of mine on the album. I think it was the last song we recorded for the album, or one of the last ones. Um, Sleepwalker, I think was well. Sleepwalker was definitely the first, um, and then I think it took like over. I think it took about two years before we finished that one because I think it started in 2019 and then just dropped off. And then the pandemic happened and, you know, everyone got inspired to, to do, do more creating, I think, and be more creative. Yeah. Um, and maybe we can, maybe we can kind of close it, close it out with this. I want to, I want to kind of give a shout out to a lot of people. Um, I watched Sweet Haya um, at the beginning of the pandemic, sort of like not knowing quite mm-hmm. what to do. And then a few weeks later they yeah. were up like with live streams and figuring out on the fly. And I just want to like Sakura it was amazing doing that stuff. And I, maybe, it, maybe it's not a question, but one of the things that I, I've, we've been talking about a little bit on Local Love is that people in bands are coming out of this, this pandemic, or hopefully we're coming out of this pandemic, fingers crossed. I heard a couple lines in that song about anti-vaxxers. Um, uh, Correct. <laughs> hopefully we're coming out of this pandemic. But if we do, a lot of bands are going to come out of this pandemic with one person who's now a fucking audio engineer or able to put together a live stream or able to do both of those things or able to do that all live. And I'm not sure. sure that, that that tool would have been in a lot of bands tool belts if people weren't stuck at home and trying to reach their audiences. So yeah, I don't, I guess that's not really a question. No, but it, that is, that is a great reflection. It's very true. I mean, I think that, I mean, I, I think of maybe, you know, relationships that have been forged over the pandemic too. Uh, you know, I, I, you know, I can only speak for myself. Like, I feel like I've, while I'm not in San Jose right now, you know, and I'm not, you know, I'm obviously not going 
um, to the shows that are happening right now, um, I feel more connected to the San Jose music scene again, because I've, I feel like in the process of recording this, this album, um, which is out on Saturday, by the way, I should add that book on VHS 2020 jazz punk greats releases this Saturday. Uh, it's my 40th birthday. So if you want to help me celebrate, please support. Um, but, um, I feel like it's, it's just, there is this part of me that I felt like was really dormant uh, when NVS first, you know, disbanded and and I really started de- deprioritizing music on my end anyway. Um, and I, you know, when you're a creative being, like like when when you lose that, like it, it feels like something inside of you dies. And, right, and it's, it's such sad. A, it, it's, it's it's incredibly sad. Yeah, it's isolating. It's it's lonely. It's this horrible feeling like you're just like. <sighs> I think of a good way to describe it. It's, it's no good. It's not a good feeling. And almost like, it's almost um, like it's almost like a, a breakup with a partner. You know, it's a great way to put it. Yeah, yeah. It's charged that, that, in that's... different ways, but it's almost like a breakup. And it's you know, it's a maybe if your band was kind of popular here in San Jose too. So it's like no, you know, it's a not the biggest thing, but it's probably like a hit to the ego. Like it was just really, it was really sad. Like like uh, when you know when. NVS wasn't playing for a bit. Um, just, I mean, we were going for 17 years. Uh, granted, not like, you know, it's not like we were, you know, active the entire time, but, you know, just in existence for 17 years. And, you know, 17 years is a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm so, I'm so happy that, that, you know, while we haven't had a collective practice together for, for a little bit, you know, that we're actively talking about playing shows again. Um, and when things, you know, hopefully get better uh sooner than hopefully sooner than later um you'll you know folks will get to see nvs play the caravan again uh because the caravan is our favorite place to play and we will definitely play the caravan once we get a chance <laughs> um but yeah and to and to be able to embrace this community again that, that just i've i felt like i personally I, I have just not been very involved in um and sadly i think that's just because i i stopped creating music and i hate for there to be that selfish reason i'd like to think i'd be less selfish and i would support these you know bands and artists uh and i i I feel like you know i'm at a point now where i'm i'm appreciating you know some of the local talent around here in ways that i don't feel like i fully appreciated um you know five or six years ago and that's exciting like i'm listening to a lot of these records like with with just uh just a, a totally sort of fresh perspective. Um, and it's so awesome hearing what people in this area are creating and what they're doing. Um, and I just want to support that. Um, I want to encourage everyone to, to, you know, use Bandcamp, use sites like that where you can pay the artists directly, uh, give, give these local artists your money, um, and help them, uh, help them help you. Right. By creating more great music. (laughs) You know, a lot of artists too, like I was saying a moment ago, have, figured out that they need a patreon and so if you like you like a particular band even if you're not sure what the perks are just give them fucking three bucks a month five bucks a month on their patreon like what's the worst that's going to happen oh they're not going to give you anything for that but then they're going to have a little bit extra scratch to spend on the next album and you're going to love the next album and seriously it's um you know it's that's another thing i think that i think that people who are really into art and music throughout the pandemic, like it dawned on people that, Hey, we actually need to pay for this stuff. Like, otherwise these people are eventually either one fucked or two. Oh, now they're a software engineer and they're not in a band, you know? And it's like, right. No, it's sad when you see, I mean, granted, we all get older, right? Of course. Um, but it's sad when you see people make, and I felt like I was making that decision for a while where it's like, okay, I'm going to prioritize my new you know, job, I'm taking a new career path. I'm, I'm, you know, I've had these life changes, uh, moving, you know, what have you, and I'm going to deprioritize music for a while. But like, I, yeah, it, it's just, that's no good because this is, I feel like in many ways, this is what I'm meant to do more than anything. Um, uh, not necessarily talking to this blue Yeti microphone, but, but, you know, just create something and hopefully share it with others. And and then, you know, hopefully they'll get a feeling out of it, uh, whether they like it or not. Um, and yeah, I gotta, I gotta thank you too, David. Uh, the <laughs> Echoplex it has been just such an integral, I mean, the fact that MVS has received so much support 
three wall. I just, just, it, it, it really, it's, it's super humbling and it's super just really cool to hear about making fans through, you know, your show um, and people being exposed to us and, and that had never heard of us before and having them reach out. It is really just super humbling and, and just, uh, su I'm super grateful for that. This Thank is you. a pretty tough, cynical crowd too. I got to tell you. <laughs> oh, it was. I, I got to admit, I, I haven't been looking at the chat, so I've, I'm I'm oblivious to No, no, not to tonight. The, not the local love, everybody's everybody's oh, nice, okay. but like generally, this is a pretty tough, cynical crowd here. So, um, you know, when when something kind of rises to the top here, it's a uh, like as far as people liking it. Trust me, those people actually really like it. They're not just trying to be your friend. So, yeah, they, it's 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 real appreciation for the music, and I. I do like, I think that that sets us apart from other creators in our space in a lot of ways too, that yeah. we, you know, other people like just basically will play like copyrighted music. They don't have permission to play. And then they just like, don't leave their video on demand up or whatever, or they'll cut that part out. And I can just leave the whole fucking show up because I have permission from everybody for the music. And I think that, you know, <clears throat> it, it, it's good for us. And I think we get more from it than we can possibly ever give back. And, um, mm -hmm especially the bands that like we're not friendly with that have sent us just banger ass music and never bothered us about anything ever, you know, never like I, we never reached out to them to have them on the show for this reason or that. And like, all they did was give me something. And so it's super cool. And I think that, uh, yeah, I think that, <clears throat> I think that maybe it'd, it'd be nice to see more local musicians and like people doing like internet radio or whatever, kind of getting together all over the country. But I think that, there's a way in which um, people are kind of sequestered into their, um, into their little social scene, be it online or in the real world. And that maybe, right. maybe those two communities don't cross as much and they only happen to cross because we decided that we like to hear our own voices and we like local music <laughs> and we're, we, we were able to go out. Like at first we were like going into like all the groups, like begging for music. Right. And now, we, <laughs> now we're not doing that. So, I, I would love to see, uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, no, but I would love to see more, more streams. You were talking about, you know, Sweet Haya and I definitely saw Monkey do this when we were talking about how Periscope had an online show. I definitely want to see more bands do these online shows because uh, I, I mean, I, I gotta say like, and, and the fact that, you know, I could watch your show recorded the next morning, you know, I'm more likely to be up at four in the morning because I wake up at that time rather than I stay up until that time. Um, just cause I turn into a pumpkin after, you know, uh 10 or 11 most nights and to be able to just kind of asynchronously be able to stream listen to the whole show unfiltered you know just like i'm there except i'm not you know i'm listening to it if you, you know maybe the next day or what have you um to be able to watch a performance and see some of the details like feel like you're like right up to this stage in many ways uh but you're in the comfort of your home i don't think that's a bad thing at all i think that's fucking fantastic i think it's great and it really helps you know just helps uh, the music scene, you know, be more connected and, and connect music lovers more with people's stuff. I think it's wonderful. And I think what we saw a lot of was bands connecting with other bands who are outside of their oh, yeah. geographical area. Definitely. And uh, that's, that's real good too. So we're a little bit over here, but whatever, it's mm -hmm. been a pleasure, Walter. Um, when things cool off a little bit, first of all, once things cool off, um, you need a place to crash in San Jose. Uh, this room has a fold out, that is oh, a awesome. memory foam and there's a fucking door you can close. So you're not like sleeping on Very somebody's cool. couch. So if you have band practice and you, you don't feel like driving all the way back, to, you're, you're more than welcome to stay here. And, um, that is super awesome. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I hate, um, as we get older, what we really want, if we spend the night at a friend's house is a fucking door to close. It's like the most <laughs> important thing is that you close a fucking door. A little semblance of privacy. <laughs> You know, it's somebody else's place. It's not that private, but you can close the fucking door. And then if somebody gets up and starts making eggs at seven in the morning and you would drink right. them, you can sleep till fucking noon in like a room and the door closed and they just leave you alone. But, <laughs> I'm, I'm admittedly that person staying at someone's house and then making coffee way too early in the morning, hopefully not waking them up. I wouldn't even if, I don't know if you, if you woke up here and made coffee, I would probably like drag my carcass out of bed, have a cup of coffee with you. Before you left. <laughs> But again, Walter, it's been a pleasure. I feel, I feel like, like, like almost like that we done fucked up. This is the first time you've been on local love and this has been a, it's been a great conversation. Um, it even got serious at the end as if this was like a, like as if we were like intellectuals and shit. So thanks a lot. And just, just keep doing what you're doing. And, um, Thank you. I look, I very much look forward to the first MVS show back. And if you guys release another song, I'm just going to fucking cry on local love the first time we play it. 
I, uh, you know what? I, I hope we do just so we could play it on, uh, on Echoplex first. On so you can watch, first. You're like, I'm going to make that guy cry. <laughs> uh, I hate to do uh, this we'll to see. you, we'll but, see. um, is there, is there an unsung hero of the NVS catalog that, that you think that maybe people would, you basically some walking off music. I know it sucked being asked to like suggest your own music. Oh, I don't, uh, so if I if I may make a suggestion, so we we put out the, it was recorded in 2015 um, at the Stork Club because the Stork Club used to be when they existed. They recorded bands and that was really cool. And they uh, we got recordings of performances we did. Um, there's a live version of Nice Guys which I believe you might have. That honestly, it's my personally my favorite version of Nice Guys. It's sloppy. I'm sloppy. I had been drinking or you know vaping or, or whatever i don't know um uh but it's fun and it's it's it characterizes i think a lot of live nvs like uh, you know flaws and all um it's was from it our live EP on called sick, sick liberty, liberty. Hmm? was it released yes, on- yeah it's the one on sick liberty yeah cool cool you know it's great because i've only rocked this one once um i reinstalled this computer just a couple months ago and the one on save california now has 29 plays <laughs> oh nice uh, it's just awesome. that it's the uh, first song you hear on our, uh, well, not the first song you hear, like if you're listening live, but if you download the podcast on Spotify right. for our Sunday show, it goes, nice mm-hmm. guys, we introduce ourselves and we play Don't Hate the Cops and then we fucking start the show. That's excellent. And so, Cole Yakko's influence lives on. Oh, Thank that, you, Cole. That song, it's so, it's just, I just, it's, it's like, it's everything. It's like almost everything we talk about here crammed into like a four minute <laughs> fucking song. <laughs> The thing that's that's missing from the live version, which is interesting, is that the horns aren't in the live version. Yes, and so, the horns are. <laughs> the horns are definitely not in there, and in many ways, I think that makes it more NVS. Uh, right, if, yeah, if you're, that not makes a, sense. you're not a ska band, right? It's yeah, I, I, definitely ska influences, and I mean, um, uh, you know. Dustin and uh, oh my god, I'm sorry, I'm blanking on people's names, but basically the horn section from Monkey uh, did a fantastic job on that song and some That's other the songs. The horn section from Monkey. It is, yeah. So it was D Max and uh, oh my god, I'm blanking on his name right now. I'm so sorry. Amazing player. Um, it's been a while since like you recorded asshole. that song. I think they'll forgive you. <laughs> but oh god, yeah, I I can't remember right now. But um, yeah. Um, the monkey influence goes a long way with NVS. I should say that, you know, with Micah and all. Um, I mean, Curtis is Curtis kind of looms large in the San Jose scene in oh, a lot yeah. of ways too. He's been a lot supportive he, of this project. When we do open panel, he's a regular guest. He did his own music talk show to try to keep the ska bands talking to each other and stuff. Yeah. Definitely. So no, Curtis is Curtis is amazing. He's been uh, a mentor. I, there are many times that I had reached out to him, especially early on, like in the in the two thousands with with NVS. I had you know some conversations with him. Really cool dude. Really knows his shit and a consummate professional. Um, you know, there's a reason why Monkey is one of the standout bands of the Bay Area. Um, fucking hardworking and they're pros. They 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 do it right. I'd say it's one of the standout ska bands in the United States. Honestly, yeah, I think, you, I mean, say, I think you could say that too. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm biased. I'm biased. So everybody, this is sick Liberty by NVS Walter. Thank you so much again. It's been a, it's been a pleasure. And to the, to my co host who couldn't come on tonight and yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, shout out to my co-host, shout out to Johnny corn, shout out to Juan Maserati, shout out to the media wench. I love you all. But, uh, every, every once in a while, every once in a while. And uh, I've never sat down and had a beer or a conversation with you, Walter. So we'll change that uh, as things. We, we will change things, that as things become more normalized. Or, I, uh, I look forward to it. And uh, sorry, one last thing again, folks. Book on VHS 2020 Jazz Punk Greats. Uh, please check it out. Uh, I've got download codes. All right, I wasn't even going to say that. I've got free download codes. If you don't want to pay the six dollars and sixty six cents, I've got you. Just the, just hit me up. Give give them to somebody else's community. These people are. These people are fucking probably dying for whatever it is. Give this to somebody else's community. The people here are actually very generous. And I, I would maybe before we end this show, I probably haven't said this on local love. The people in my Twitch community, not so much the people who listen to the podcast. Hello. But the people in my Twitch community have been very generous. And I think that, um, and I think that, that that's great. And it uh, might be because I have great guests like Walter. Anyway, this is a live version of nice guys. And this is from, you say from the Stork club. From the store club, yeah, I recorded live at the store club. 
Right on, Walter. Thank you. Thank you so much. And uh, definitely stay in touch and uh, hit me up anytime you're in San Jose. That sounds great, David. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. What are we playing? We're playing some nice, nice songs. So we're going to finish this off nice by NVS. Nice guys by NVS off our album Save California. So many nice people in this world A cess full of kindness and ethical blindness The blinker part by the casting tone Of a bit and a well by the sample show You're such a nice guy Mr. Piss Trump Fraternity Guy They become an asshole with bloodshot eyes Get drunk and fight every night Idolize Bradley for little women's rights Homophobic racist and don't give a fucking hey Do you think you could give another fuck? Where your back will say to the side of life Everyone know that you're a nice go So damn cool, we're so impressed Lots of chicks in a barrel chest Cause you're a real man Punch for punch Gonna piss in your face Or you're packed out drunk I'm a nice guy You're a nice guy We're all nice guys Oh, you're an asshole I'm a nice guy You're a nice guy You're a nice guy Oh, you're an asshole Nice guy Guys, finish first. Mr. White Peter, you're next on the list Such a nice guy who speaks through his fist Pick who would you pledge it for messing with head A broken nose for dinner and breakfast in bed Alcoholic, paranoid, into a double tube But you're privileged to feel the hurt of what you got to win for you She cleans in the pool of blood and cries All your friends say that you're a nice guy Have a drink, this one's on me Look at you, this one's on me Oh, this one's on me, this one's on me Oh, Nice guys, finish first!